Hello everyone, my name is Bhaskar Gupta. I'm working as a technical product manager for VCPP. This session is about what's new with VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.4. I'm assuming that you are familiar with the previous version, that's 1.3, or having an understanding of VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager. If not, not to worry. Please feel free to refer the previous videos where I talked about the same or you can refer this VMware documentation as well. With version 1.4, there have been a significant enhancements in the GUI. We'll see those in a while. Before that, let's discuss the other features which have been introduced with version 1.4. Day 2 operations have been added in GUI. Earlier, the day 2 operations like product upgrade, certificate and node management were available only through API and CLI. But with this version, we have introduced these features in GUI as well for the ease of manageability. Secondly, you can perform multiple tasks simultaneously. Finally, as mentioned earlier, the GUI features have been enhanced and additional tasks have been added like administration task, detailed task views, which can help you identify issues and easily troubleshoot. Then we have got simplified import operations, intra bundle, and then finally product and uh, data center discover feature, which comes handy with this version. I hope this session is going to be interesting for you. With that, let's show you how 1.4 looks like and what are its features in a demo. Let's log into VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager. Now what we see is pretty much the same what we have observed in 1.3. We have got environment, data center, task and administration. So under environment, we have got two products deployed. One is usage meter, another is VCD. For each product which you deploy, we have introduced day two operations, which can be seen from here. We have got upgrade, manage nodes, manage certificate and discover. So if you click on upgrade, you can select the version which you want to upgrade to and uh, disable rollback or delete backup as per your convenient and click on validate it will check all the parameters the pre-validation steps which we have seen in api call as well and upgrade the steps are the same the back end it will take a backup of the database and snapshot once it has successfully upgraded the product it will delete the snapshot and database backup also so apart from upgrade we have got manage nodes we can add or delete a node for the product which it supports then we have manage certificate we can see the certificates which had already been configured and replace the certificate and download them as well discover this feature is pretty handy wherein if you have deployed a product and later on have made some changes to it so this will sync all those changes with vmware cloud provider lifecycle manager repository with a registered product so you need not worry about the latest changes being missed. So you can click on discover product and all the changes. For example, if you have added a node or any other configuration changes like certificate being replaced. So it can be checked from here and it will register those changes. So another thing which you can do is if you click on open, you will be able to see the configurations. For example, the product details which you have given the specifications while deploying or registering the product and can check all those parameters here as well. The integration, the certificates which have configured and under operations we have got the same upgrade, manage nodes, manage certificate, discover, download the environment as JSON and delete. So the delete option what you see is it will unregister the product from VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager but the instance will still be there in the vCent server. So it won't delete the product itself, just the registration will be removed. So these are some of the day two activities and tasks which are added with VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.4 under Environments tab. Now if you go on Data Center, so I've got three data centers in the sense the VDOPS and NS60 and vCenter components have been uh, registered as a data center. So we don't manage those data centers from Lifecycle Manager itself but we just add them to use it as a reference and integration purpose. So here itself, we also have these functions. So we can delete those references from here, but the instance will still be there. We can edit and discover. Let's take an example of discover task here. Let's say you have registered the vCenter server as a data center quite some time ago, and there are some network changes being have happened. 
if you have removed any port groups or added and also the data stores have been removed or it has been added so it will register all those changes here and it will sync it with vmware cloud provider lifecycle manager repository so you need not worry if you think that you want to add a product and you want to use the recently added network in the data center so all you need to do is discover here edit those and then you can go ahead and deploy a product using those network as well now another task is edit so if you want to edit any parameters of the registered data center you can do that you can see here the ntp domain search part dns and networks or any other configuration details if you want to edit under complete data center setup you can validate those parameters which you have edited and then apply the changes or you can download the data center as a json itself finally as i said you can delete the registration from here the instance will still be there click open and see what all have been configured as you can see all the data center cluster resource pool and data stores are listed the network details now coming to the task details we have enhanced the task details to a greater extent so for every task id you can see a log file here for example this one if you click anyways you were able to see those subtasks in the earlier version but you can see more granular details from the task logs and you can download those log files as well so apart from logging into the vmware cloud provider lifecycle manager host and checking those details using puri you can use this option instead for each task id we have got the log files and you can go to those log files and troubleshoot for any issues which you encounter these are some of the enhancements from the troubleshooting perspective now if you click on administration we have got download logs and support bundle we will be able to download the zip file and under that all the repositories and the log files the gui api logs can be visible and all you need to do is just go there and look for any errors or any abnormalities in your deployment if you come across any so what we are trying to do is rather than you going back and forth from gui and partition you can just perform all those activities from here itself all the troubleshooting steps and we have got the interop bundle check here we will be able to check the latest interop bundle which are released and you can update the interop bundle from here itself so you don't need to go there and run the script as you have been doing earlier so these are some of the features which have been added with version 1.4 so don't you think this will be helpful for managing your environment or performing the day to day task in terms of deployment or upgrade do let us know and share your valuable feedback and thank you for watching this video